Hey everybody, so today we're going to start this video over. Hey everybody, so today I'm back on a Sim 2. This came in from my uh, day job. A uh, guy went to replace the lamp assembly, or the lamp in this one, and um, he said the issue did not clear up. He said the video was starting to shake, or jitter, and flicker was the other term used. Um, but he didn't say color flicker, he said it would just, the whole picture would kind of flicker, and I, I have a few theories. Um, I can see the top's not back on all the way, and that's okay, it's not a, uh, there's no door switch. But let's plug it in, and see how it acts in standby. Let me kill that power switch. This is an older projector, but these are really nice, even the, uh, even the older ones had a really nice picture on them. It has HDMI, as you can see, and VGA, and then uh, we have video and S-video. Uh, no component. So, oh, that doesn't sound good. I don't know if you guys heard that. I moved the camera up real close. Hopefully you guys can hear this little buzzing noise the uh, Transformers are making. Something's not right. Instead of starting this up and possibly ruining something, let's take the cover off, give everything a once over, I have a theory that there's going to be four to six bad capacitors inside this projector. So let's see if that's the case. The back two screws are removed. I think on this model that's all we have to take out. Uh, no, that's right, these two guys. Yeah. That top wasn't back on right, so I figured maybe he didn't put them back in, but he did. Looks like he just didn't put them back in uh, all the way. Oops, almost. Almost. There we go. Oops. Okay, so that should relieve, release the top now. Yeah, there we go. And the controls are on the back, so there's no keyboard. Set that off to the side. So my gut is telling me... Ooh, that's weird. Oh no, that's normal. All right, I thought that was tape at first. That's just a heat shrink from Sim 2. So I think the problem's down in here. I think it's probably got the classic bad four bad capacitors that I've worked on a few times. Oh, we're also missing... what do you do here? Strip that one out, broke it. Well, let's take the lamp assembly out and uh, take a look at that. So normally there's two screws, but we just have this one and then this one over here. Just want to make sure the uh, lamp assembly was installed correctly. Supposed to be another one right there. Oh, this one is not coming out. What the heck? That's been stripped. It might not even be the proper screw. There we go. Let's set this over here. Let's just check this first. Okay, that was dumb. Well, not dumb, but... Well, it was dumb, but or ignorant. He didn't know. Don't put tape like this. That, Yeah, that was going to melt and get stuck in a fan. So, don't use duct tape on electronics. This stuff here is actually to cover up the connection. So you don't have to worry about arcing. It shouldn't. Later models, they stopped using this, but here's the uh, the housing, 
What did he do? It looks like somebody just ran a screw until it started to melt the plastic. Yeah. That's what happens when you use a drill. Yeah, see, it's supposed to be like that. Let's see if that... Let's see if this other screw... So there's supposed to be a short screw, I believe, that goes in there, and then a long one that goes in here. It's supposed to hold... Yeah, actually the other way around. There's supposed to be a screw in here and another screw here so that you can lift this whole thing up and this stays attached. And then this one would go in after the long screwdriver. Yeah, see that's, that screw's alright. I'll find another screw unless we find the missing one inside the housing, so inside this uh, casing somewhere. Gonna take the lamp assembly out. Uh, actually, I need to do that because the, where we're going, into the, where I'm pretty sure we're going, we're gonna have to disconnect this, so. I'm going to cut that zip tie. We'll put a new one on if we even need to. Just unplug this. See, this is kind of how it's supposed to work. This sits in here. And then there's a screw that goes into here. You take out, you lift the cover off, and then there's another screw on this side so that this lamp stays in there. You know, so you can take just that. Make sure you go, yeah, I can still see that. So that way you take this off, and that would still be screwed in on that side. So we'll find another screw and put that in when we put it back together. But for now, we'll just sit it over there. Oh, and he cracked it. Oh, no. He cracked his... Uh... What the heck did he crack the lamp? Oh, jeez. Or no, did he crack the filter? Oh, boy. Uh, let's check this. I see some broken glass that's scaring me. This thing might be, uh, not junk, but beyond, beyond reasonable repair. Let's see if that glass is damaged at all. Yeah, see these these connectors aren't in the right way. Yeah, these didn't go back in the right spot. The uh, the bump goes down. So this one should have been here, like that. So it looks like these all came out and these all went together backwards. Use a camera, folks. When you take stuff apart and you're going to do maintenance like this, take pictures. Take lots of pictures. You can always delete them when you're done. But there's a chance. Cause I, I can't get glass. I mean, I can't get the, uh, the proper glass for this anymore. They don't make it. See? And this actually has a uh, coating on it, I think. Oh, maybe not. Maybe no coating. Doesn't look like it. But that's what happens when you tighten it down wrong. Let me get that piece of glass. Um... Put this somewhere safe out of the way so I don't accidentally cut myself. We're gonna try it without that glass because the uh, that bare lamp there has that glass, so that'll kill any UV. And I'm pretty sure there's an IR filter up past this in here. So, all right, so let me set that here. See, the other thing they did when they tightened that down too much, they cracked this little frame 
I mean, it'll be okay. It'll, it'll hold together just fine, but that's a shame. Next step is taking this mesh off the top. Now, there's a bunch of Phillips, and then one, two, three, four security screws with a little pin in the middle, so you could use a flathead. See if this flathead will work. Yep, just about. All right, there. Come on, either turn or take that little pin out. I'll do. I'll take either or. So what I'm actually doing is I was trying to get the screw to spin putting the flathead between the pin and the um, teeth, but they're a little too tight, so instead it just kind of breaks that little pin out, but that means I can just use a uh, normal Torx. I don't need a, you know, a fancy um, security driver Torx. I can just use a normal, normal Torx. Sometimes if these are not super tight, that slotted driver is enough to get them moving. Holy mackerel. Why are they so tight? Alright, well, maybe that's not the right Torx. Let's see here. Big. This one's going to be too small. Yeah. And where's the rest? Oh, there they are. Uh, too small. Closer. T10 it is. So these are T10 security torques. Unless you try to take them out with a small flathead, then they just become T10 normal torques. <clears throat> there we go. Wow, that did not want to turn. It wanted to strip on me in the worst way. Yeah, I got it though. There we go. Take that grid off. And this is where I think the problem is down in there. So that means this whole thing lifts out. There's a, uh, a screw down in the bottom, a single screw. Then let's unplug the low voltage out. Oops, knock that plastic thing out. Let me get that before I forget. Oops, come on. Just trying to be gentle so I don't accidentally scratch or break something. Come on, a little more. Man. All right. We'll get it out after I get this out. All right, getting loose. And then this screw right here. Am I still in frame? Yep, just barely. And 
then these two AC wires. One, two. Then we have some sort of thing over here which I'll have to unplug. Let's see, two things to unplug. Ballast control wire, then whatever that thing is, some sort of temp sensor probably. Alright, so this is what we gotta look at, but let me get that plastic uh, that plastic piece out. I'm just gonna leave that lamp basket in there. There it goes. All right, let's slide this back out of the way. Now there are a few capacitors in here that are probably bad. They like making that that noise. It's uh, just a few. I don't know if they were cheap or like why they ended up using those, but you know. So anyway, to take it apart, take that one out. It's not too bad to get this. It's actually not a bad job to do, really. SIM2 is such nice stuff. I wanted a SIM2 3 DLP for the longest time. I still kind of want one, but yeah. I've got a uh, Christie laser now, so, you know. Alright, so let's unplug the ballast. This is using a 3AC380 from Osram. Curious they didn't use the big filter cap. <laughs> but I suspect our issue is that, that, and then the two under here. So let's take this board out. And then we will We'll check those caps. And remember, these are the screws that have the um, star washer. Oops. Oh. Where did that come from? I didn't take that out. This is the screw, hmm, things are starting to make a little more sense. All right, so this was screwed in, is it this one? Hmm. This goes to something, and that was just laying in here. I hope that didn't hit something, and that's what damaged the board. Oof, that would stink. All right, let's get these nylon guys out. I'm actually going to put them somewhere else so I don't mix up the nylon ones. So the nylon ones go where the rubber is. Uh, nylon, nylon, oh, there's rubber all over the place. All right, that's fine. I'm just going to put a little... N and N for nylon. No burn marks. Okay, good. That's good. That's good, good. Everything looks okay. I don't see any bloated. 
leaky caps, I just know these two and the ones under here are common. Ah, and there was a fella who messaged me a few days ago looking for T201, this transistor. So T201 is a P5N P5 NK80. Alright, next thing we need to do is get these screws out because this whole aluminum piece needs to come out of the way. Now one thing I like to do here, and you'll I'll show you in a moment, is I put these screws. Wow, this is loose. These are like These are all very loose. That's weird. That's okay. That's that was crooked. Hmm. I wonder if somebody else was in this far. I mean the the fasteners in the top were not very tight. Or were very tight. They were not very loose, but these are like these were barely snug. I thought they were stripped at first. So what I'm going to do once I get this one out and we lift this metal piece up is I'm going to set the screws back in their appropriate holes. Yeah, and this is loose. This standoff is very loose. This is weird. Alright, let me just... So I do this because the screws are different lengths because they're holding different parts in. And I don't think it would be a huge deal if you mixed them up, but looking at the stuff behind it, if you have one going too far, you might hit something you shouldn't. You know, it's better to put them back where they're supposed to be. So I just do that, and then you don't have to worry. But this... That's loose. Man, this is just weird. I wonder if somebody worked on it and then, I don't know. Why would you do that? The, uh, that's an important connection here. That's a ground. I'm pretty sure. What we got here? Oh, nothing cracked. NTC Thermistor looks good. Alright, let's throw a meter on a couple of these semiconductors just to verify they're okay, and then I'll start yanking caps. Alright, we're back. I have desoldered the capacitors in question. There was a 100 at 50 that looks like it may have been changed at one point. Maybe that's why everything was loose here? I don't know. But let's do a capacitance check first before I do an ESR test. Um, I kind of expect, yeah, see 93.7 microfarad. This is a 100, 105C. That's well within spec, so it's less than 10% out. So that one's fine. Let's check these. These are all supposed to be 47. 17 microfarads. Not good. Remember, it's supposed to be 47 or close to 47. 22. That's less than half. Mm. Uh, 21. All right, so all three of these are bad. I'm not even going to bother doing an ESR test on them, there's no point. These are definitely bad. So these are going to get changed. This one's going to go back in. And then uh, I'll be right back. There we go. One, two, three replaced. Oh, I forgot to mark. I forgot to mark the last one. 
I change these, I like to just put a little Sharpie mark. So if I ever go back in here again, I'll know, remember which ones I did. So now, those are all changed. There's the bottom. In case anybody ever needs to see what the bottom of a power supply for a SIM 2 looks like. And I know I showed the transistors already, but let's, or MOSFETs rather, let's get a good view of those again. So if you need one, you can. Here, let's, in fact, let's. chip down here. So I can hold it the right way up. Okay, that is good. And then we have a diode on that heat sink. Come on, focus. There we go. So if anybody needs any parts, now they know what to look for. So let's get the, uh, let's put that metal heat sink back on. So again, we're going to take our screws out. I'm going to line them up. You guys can't even see what I'm doing here. Here we are. So from right to left. From little MOSFET to thermal sensor thingy there. What do they have that is NTC? It's a thermistor, NTC thermistor. So from MOSFET to thermistor, it's little, little, big, little. And then take this one out that holds the uh, bracket down. So let's set this guy in here. So I just snug that down. It is not tight because I may need to shift it around to get all these to go where they need to go. Hopefully I can just... Oops. So the thermistor, of course, is just kind of loose. The wires go under the heat sink. And this thermistor, I suppose, is to measure if this heat sink ever gets too hot. So it can shut itself down before that uh, that guy, the big guy, goes bad. They use these IR FP460s in um, xenon power supplies that I work on. So it's a heavy duty MOSFET. It's big, lots of power, lots and lots of power. And that screws awfully wobbly, but it does tighten down. So that that threaded insert in the back was not stripped. I was trying to understand why these were all so loose. Snug, 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 and now let's tighten, there we go. Now we're ready to put this back together, let's get our little carrier here, and then we will get our nylon screws that went here and 
then this one goes back here. And then we'll put, actually, let me leave these just a hair loose because I might have to shift all this stuff around. So let's see, this screw. Yep. And wait a minute, I'm trying to make sure I don't mix up the wrong ones. There we go. These two. And star washer. I don't know how well these star washers really work or if they work at all. I hear conflicting things. I can see physically how they're expected to work. But, I don't know. Now if they really, like if you get it that tight where the metal's going to dig in, I mean, they're not super heavy, so I would expect them to crush before they really dig into the metal. Though I could see them digging into the circuit board, so maybe that's the idea. I don't know. Did this one, maybe this one didn't have a star washer? I don't see an extra star washer. Huh. I bet whoever worked on this last time lost that star washer. Actually, let me go find one. So now it has a star washer where they're supposed to be. Snug those nylon guys down. That one's snug. That's good. All right, so let's reconnect the top half. And this is going to come through here. So let's just... Hold that Nomex paper so it doesn't get in the way. There we go. All right, let's get some screws. One. and then three. Oh, wait a minute. Did I put the wrong I put the wrong ones in. I was going to say for some reason I remember the screws being a little longer and the heads looking a little different. Yeah? Or no? My What do we got here? This one this one goes here. That holds the lamp in. No, that's not the right one. I think I had it right the first time. Okay, much better. And then we'll pop that in there. And then this one, whoop, that one, that is this, right? No? Oh, that's the end, uh, thing on the inside. All right, good. So this piece goes back over here and hopefully next time I don't knock it out. Oh, backwards, backwards, come on. 
I don't know if it really matters, but that's how it was. Let's move Mr. Lamp Assembly housing holder out of the way. Let's get that wire. Actually, I'm just going to tuck that in here so it's not in the way. These two have to be plugged back in. That'll be plugged back in. All right, let's get ready to drop this in. So first thing, let's plug our power back into the ballast from the power supply. We don't want to forget that. Then our control cable. There we go. And then temperature sensor, like that. Then this just kind of slides right on down until those things line up. That's good. And then there's that one screw down the bottom. Oh, that was the screw I found loose that I thought somebody else had probably done. This screw, this uh, coarse thread one, I thought somebody else lost that, but it is the screw that goes in the bottom that holds this in place. There we go. All the way down. That's not it. was it and I didn't have it straight. Nope. Oh, I see. It was one of the screws that go through the top here. In fact, I see exactly which one it was. It was the one that I meant I almost put in the power supply that goes here. All right, we'll come back to that. Let's get this stuff all plugged in because we're going to fire it up before we put too many screws in. I don't want to take a chance of it not working. All right, we got that plugged in. Wires down. That one's in. Let's get these guys plugged in. We have our PFC or uh, AC going to the main supply. All right, temporarily, I'm going to drop that screw in just to just to kind of you know keep things from wobbling around. Just have to remember to take that out before we put the cover, put the the shield on. All right, now let's put the uh, lamp assembly together. Then we'll plug that in and, and see how that does. All right, so I was looking at this glass again, trying to figure out if there's any way we can use it, but I just, I don't see, I don't know. I just don't see this being a good thing. There's no, <clears throat> there's no filter on it. There's no coating that I can see. I don't know if you guys can see if I can get it to reflect into the camera. Yeah. So I don't see any difference. So we're going to just not use this. But only because that's on there. I suspect that piece of glass was for the original, the old bulb that used to go in there. They didn't always have this glass bit on the front. And I think that's supposed to protect the lens and the projector for if the, uh, if the arc tube pops. So I'm going to let that go. We're going to call that good. I'm going to snug these wires down. That wire was way too loose. I wonder if that was contributing to their flickering. Having a loose wire. I'm just going to flip that connector over. You want to have the the flat side 
of the wire against the connector like that. Yeah, that feels much better. Oh, this one's backwards too. Well, I mean, it would still work. I don't think, I don't think that was really a big problem, but I like to do it this way so that you have very good, you know, flush connections. So that'll go like this. Actually, we could. He has it ceiling mounted, so I'm going to do it that way. Is that going to be a problem? I don't think so. Let's see. Am I? Just want to make sure. I'm not going to hit the fan. No, that's fine. Yeah, we'll do it that way. Let's start putting the pieces back on the housing here. Remember the little bump, that little bump right there goes down. You should see a dimple looking back up at you. If you don't see a dimple, it's upside down. started. Started a little better. Once those are started, you can go around and get all the rest ready. Uh, tighten them all down last. Don't tighten them down first. That way you can make sure everything is centered and aligned and not going to be a, uh, a huge hassle. Again, I'm making sure the little bump is pointing down and that we're seeing a little dimple looking back at us. A simple dimple. Alright, and then we, let's see, I need to get star washers together. Where'd that go? There it is. I'm going to put that, um, I'm going to put that duct tape that I pulled off the wire, I'm going to put that with the glass. And I'll put that all in a bag with the old capacitors and the, um, the glass. And give that all back to the customer. It's, it's all theirs. I don't, I don't need to hold on to that. It doesn't do me any good. And it's theirs. I don't own that. I don't own any of this except for the tools, right? It is kind of interesting when you think about it. People, you know, trust you to their devices. And sometimes us repair folks take better care of them than the owners. I don't know why I even said that. Alright, let's snug these down. We will last part of reinstalling this bare bulb lamp lamp uh, bare lamp whatever you want to call it this thing is to snug these screws down so I'm going to bring them down until they stop and then just a smidge more give it a little shake it doesn't come loose now we can put it back in the projector now the fun begins now, putting this back in with the bulb already in here, you know, having this sitting there, it's really difficult for some reason. I think part of it's getting that wire threaded through the Nomex on the back. But what we're going to try, and I'm hoping will work, is that I will go in my screw bin and find the missing screw that should, where is that, oh that's right, it all goes into here. Am I doing this backwards? Maybe I am. Well, let's see what happens. I'm going to put the lamp housing in there like I did, and now we're going to see if the whole thing will slide in without 
me having to finagle everything. Ah, it just slipped. Ah, forget it. Oh, maybe. I mean, it didn't go as nice as I had hoped, but I think, nope, that front pin didn't go in. This front pin has to line up. So we're just going to do it the way I usually do it, which is put that in first, put this screw in, actually I'm going to go find a shorter version. This screw actually needs to be over here, so let me find a shorter screw. I found one. It's about three quarters the length. Perfect. See, now that's in there. Then we'll put this on. Getting that wire through here is a little tricky, but it's, you know, it's not that bad. It's just, I kind of wish you could, I wish you could connect that carrier to this thing and just drop it all in at once. Oop. Got to slide it down in that groove. There we are. Perfect. That lines up. Snug down. Now I'm not going to zip tie this just yet. We're going to try it first. Make sure everything's hunky dory and then we will finalize it with some zip ties and stuff. And I think I'm going to put that screw in right here. I think we're going to put one in there. A not stripped one. I might need to find one of those because the one I took out was totally stripped out. So I'm probably going to have to find another one because I, I essentially stole one of these top screws to do that with. But this is good. The uh, top is all together. I will re... There we go. <laughs> Rerun those wires where they're supposed to be. I had them in the wrong side. There we go. Nice, 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 nice. I don't know if I got video footage of this, but I put this back in, went to fire it up, and it made all kinds of noise, hissing, spitting noises, and the bare lamp, when it would go to fire, wouldn't do anything. It would just go tick, 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 and I could see a little arc inside, but no actual light coming out. So something is wrong in here. The uh, ballast, maybe? Primary power supply to the PFC, more likely. Um, we're going to check the MOSFETs on here, see if they're the problem. I kind of doubt it. To me, it's acting like there's not high enough PFC, like we're not getting the 400 out here. So I kind of want to start there and check to see if we have the 400. Um, I had to plug these in because I'm pretty sure that's where it gets the power good signal from. Um, maybe we got some more bad caps. I don't know. This one, maybe. Like it feels bumpy on the top, but I'm not sure if that's just the plastic. We might desolder that and check it, but before we go there, I just want to fire it up and get some voltage reading, see if we have that PFC and all that. Let's kick on standby. Hear that? That sounds terrible. Like I'm almost waiting for it just to go bang. That's the noise. That's obviously not a good noise. Um, but we are getting, you know, some response, so, uh, let's get these insulators off, and let's back pin the first two. Actually, are these all ground? Let's see something here. 
So it should be every other if we go black to black. Nope. So the last two. So this one, that one, and that one, but those two are not. Just wanted to get an idea. Because if I get one good ground, I'll just use that. Like I'll pretty sure if we just ground it to the body. Yeah. All right. Good. Let's go DC. Twelve five three point oh yeah, twelve five three point nine five Just trying to figure out where that noise is even coming from. Like, what in here? It's an inductor. Maybe this inductor rattling there, or that one. Well, I disconnected the low voltage load. So let's see if that makes any difference. Okay, so something. That inductor, maybe? We might have to put a scope on it. Let's check the uh, PFC now. That's going to be these. So we're on that. You guys can see the meter. Yeah, you see how it's kind of jumping around? I feel like that should have been more stable. I think I might have to pull that cap out. Let's let's pull this board out and then I'm going to check that cap and we'll go. I set up the thermal camera. So let's see what we got. Ooh. Got a heat heat spot right there. And because of parallax that is MOSFET. Yep. Hmm. I think it's that guy. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Very hot. Very, very, very hot. Very hot. I wonder if that's breaking down. Alright, let's see if the... See if the capacitor is decharged now. If I can touch it. Yeah, okay. Because it was going to... It was charging. You know, it was going to 380, but it was all over the place. Let's see. That MOSFET is... Through that coil, that inductor. Then we have the diode. That's, this is for, I'm pretty sure, our main PFC power. I wonder if that... No, that MOSFET can't be bad. Boy, it's warm. It's really hot, actually. Not even warm, it's hot. Hmm. Let's just do a quick short circuit test. I, I don't expect it to be shorted in any way, shape, or form. 1.12, 1 volt, 0.6 volts. So that's the protection diode. But I wonder why I'm getting that. I don't think I should have anything from gate source 
can drain the source one way we should have that that's the blocking diode Am I looking at this right Let's see that's base yeah that's base and it is connected to See, it goes back. See the trace going over to here, maybe? It's probably that chip driving it. But there's something else going on here. I think we might want to desolder that MOSFET and check it. This other one here, I'm pretty sure that's the uh, low voltage switching for this stuff. Let's see. Oh, well, maybe not. Maybe that's it too. Maybe that's the main switching goes to hmm oh this turns on the PFC so that's our switch for the PFC that enables that output so this is our main switching MOSFET for everything so there could be something else causing this problem maybe this cap 10 mic at 63 I think we're going to pull this one out, this old 10 mic here, and check that. Let's do that, and I'm also going to pull the big MOSFET out, and we'll check that for leakage. I don't expect this to be bad. This maybe. There's something making this transformer vibrate like crazy. Like that thing's just... Hopefully there's no um, arc inside. But these caps have been changed that cap was changed and so this one these all physically look good and I don't really see any reason to check them to pull them out and check them but this one it's an off-brand I also might want to I think I want to clean up this thermistor wiring here the one wire shorter than the other be you nice know, to make them both the same length so it looks nice okay so I checked a few other things and I kept Kind of coming back to that filter cap, I could see that the power going to the low voltage was choppy, but the low voltage itself, as you guys may have, I don't know if I showed that on the scope or not, but the uh, low voltage was dead on. It was the PFC and the other uh, higher voltage, which was jumping all over the place. So, I, uh, this looked fine, it feels fine. But, it's supposed to be a 100. We're getting like nanofarads. There's nothing going on. I wonder if one of the uh, wires burned off. That does look a little hot down there. But anyway, I swapped it out with the replacement. And I figure, let's have you guys see what happens when we flip the power on. Three, two, one. And here we go. Huh. That is awfully quiet. No buzzing. No noise. Let's see if let's see if we have our PFC. If I can do this safely without shocking myself, 400 volts DC does not feel very good. Nice and even, no jittering. That's it. We got it. So this thing had uh, had four bad caps in it, bad filter cap, and then those uh, three little guys. Those 47s at 50. 
Um, at least so far, that's what it looks like. Uh, let's get this put back together so we can test it. Hmm. That's good. 
good. It goes there. All right, this is ready to go back in, and we'll see what happens. And then this screw, the coarse thread, goes down inside and holds that whole mechanism in there, plus the screws that are going to go on the top. Got something. Can I do this without taking it all the way out? Maybe. Nope. There we go. I got that. Where are we at here? Right there, got that back in. All right, and now magic. All right, so I put that back in. Let's get this little screw in here. Just to tie the grounds together. So everything's shielded. It's just that there's one screw in here that was just really chewed up. Yeah, it's this one. I'm going to leave that one out. I'm going to have to go in my screw bin and find another. Actually, i got to find two. I wanted to find one for here as well. I'm sure I have one. I've got tons of screws. I'm not worried about it. In fact, here's one. I'll use this one. It's actually out of a SIM 2, so perfect. All right, then we plug this in, slide that back up inside there, and we'll try. All right, I see the green light. We have our standby power. For some reason, up is power that's fine. Get ready to hit this in case something goes wrong. Nah, happy. I see the lamp. Lamp's coming on. 
See it down there? We should see a picture here in a moment. I see something. Yeah, there it is. Ah. I'm not sure which one zoom. Okay, that's zoom. Focus. Alright, motors are responding. I'm not going to be able to get it to focus in such a short throw, but we can see that works. So let's shut it down. Oh, wait a minute. And then uh, we're going to finish putting the top on, all that stuff, and then we'll take it over to the other side and run it. Okay, slight change in plans. The lamp that the bear lamp that is in there is allegedly the old lamp, I think. Customer asked if I could install the new lamp, and they'll save the other one as a spare. Oh yeah, that is the new one. Okay. Well, in that case, let's do a supplemental relamp video uh, of sorts. Okay, so to relamp one of these, this has to come out. And so we're going to take that screw back out. I'm going to take this screw out. And then also that one down there. That with the others. I'm gonna unplug the cable and then slide up and take that out. Slide that back. And we did have this out. I must have been confused because it had a, a sticker on it that I recognized, so I kind of thought it was a, uh, this was the new one, because it's actually in pretty good shape, but I should have actually checked that number, and then I could have seen that it was older. So to switch these out, you don't, I don't believe we have to take all of these pieces off. I think we can just loosen the back two these guys right there and here let's zoom you guys in so you can just see a little better there we go I like that and then I should be able to yeah just slide that out and this one's in well it's a little used it's not in terrible shape though let's slide this one in now if your housing still has that piece of glass in the front make sure you put that back in um, if it was broken like this one was we're just going to leave it out because there is a glass on the front of that lamp so we don't we don't need it there's no coating on there so should be fine Oops. Okay, good good. Let's spin that around and let's let's move the wires over. What I like to do is just literally loosen it enough while holding it to move it. There we go. And then the same thing on this side. And that'll go here. There we are. Then 
this one we will save, or he will save. It'll be a good spare in a pinch. It will get him video. Although the chances of it going bad are pretty slim in my opinion. Sim 2 just manages everything and the projector very well that usually you end up replacing the lamp when you're told to rather than when it fails. And then I'm just going to put the date on it. And then I will make sure I include that with the uh, projector. If you need a bare lamp for one of these, it's a Phillips 9281-356-05390. The OEM, I believe, was an Osram, but I'm positive they don't make those anymore. Same reflector shape and everything. Now let's put it back in. Set that down. And I'm going to put the first screw in and this will hold will hold that down there we go that holds that in place and then we're going to slide this down so that it's lined up with that track and then I'm going to just kind of Manipulate the wire through the back. There we go. I don't know if actually if I'm going to zip tie this, I don't really need to. Because once it's in there, it's not going anywhere. There we are, that's down. Let's put the top screw in. That goes through this shell and through the uh, carrier so that's good okay that's in that's in let's put that little screw in right This has to go on. Let's just make sure we're not going to crush any wires. We have this uh, bundle coming up and over here. I just want to make sure we have that gap and we do. So that'll be all right. going to loosen these two up because this whole thing has to shift around a little. We'll tighten those down once uh, I get this on. And we do have those security fasteners that I modified. Oop. Throw my screws over here. There we go. So those have to go back on. That started. Okay, and then the security screws. We have one, two, three. One, two, three, four. We have five of those. That's a Phillips. Oh, four. Sorry.
you know what, I'll put them all on the top and then the Phillips will go in on the side. There's two shorties that are going to go there. I know they're shorties because, well, that's what came out. And also, if they were long, they would short out. So, we don't want it to short out. Mm, pardon me. Uh, torx, Torx, Torx. Where is it? Am I looking at it? Is that it? Yeah, I think that's it right there. Yeah. All right, let's get these. Mixing up screws, don't want to do that. Okay, that's looking good. There we go. Wow. Brightness is still coming up. The uh, lumen output on these older SIM 2s is not super high, but I didn't even adjust the focus on this. Look at that picture. Like, look how clear and the colors. Like, it, it. I'd have a heck of a time if I didn't blink my eyes real fast. I would have no belief that there was a color wheel in this. I'd think it was an LCOS. SIM 2 just. Man, just so nice. I love my Christie, but. Someday. You know, but we got a good picture here. I got some cats playing. I just picked a video. I'm gonna let this run for a bit, and um, then we'll put the screws back in and get it on out of here. So I'll let this run, and then I'll be back uh, to put the screws in the bottom and wrap up the video. Now these are going into plastic threads, so keep that in mind when you put these in. Give it that little back turn so that you can get it to seat. So we've got two on the back. Then we got two on the bottom. Do those now. Then we just have these two in the front.
And same thing, give it a little back turn just to get that, uh, you know, get that, you know, it looks like this might be ceiling mounted, or it was. The uh, orientation was right side up, so I don't know. Oh, and the little foot came out of there. That's supposed to be in there. Pretty sure. See, this is a handle. See? That hasn't been moved in a while. Pretty sure that. No. Eh, nah, we'll leave it there. That's where it was. I'm always trying to fix everything. Let's put that last screw in. There we go. Let's put the handle back. That'll do it. The uh, repair was four capacitors, three 47 at 50s, and one 100, wait, there we are, 100 at 450, and uh, like I said, three 47s at 50. So I'll give those back to the customer so uh, he can do what he wants with them. Uh, that's how to repair a noisy power supply in a SIM2 Domino 80. Um, I have to say, I've never actually seen a filter cap, well, rarely have seen filter caps go bad like that. Usually it's a little more physically obvious, but there must have been uh, maybe a problem with Acrotronics at one point. Who knows? But it's got Nichicons in it now, so we're in good shape. You know, it'll probably last a while. And we changed the lamp out, so that's good to go. So I'm going to send it on back to the customer. Uh, if you have any questions about your SIM2 Domino series, go ahead and stick it down in the comments. I also want to give a shout-out to uh, SIM2 Tech Support for helping me key in on that capacitor. I reached out to them, and uh, the gentleman there is very kind and gave me a couple of things to check and uh, mentioned this as a potential issue and he was right I uh, was headed that direction but it just didn't make sense for pardon me it didn't make a ton of sense retrospect it makes a ton of sense now I just had never seen an assume to one of those go bad so anyway that's all there is to it um, if uh, you have any questions stick it down in the comments I'll leave a link in the description if you need a replacement lamp for one of these uh, but most importantly Thank you for watching.